Hey guys, Ron here, and recently I invited 9 other Poketubers, and together we created our own Pokemon. Each individual YouTuber gave me an attribute for the Pokemon, like its type, stats, environment, color scheme, etc., without knowing the other attributes that were chosen. So for example, one YouTuber could choose the type combination of Bug Water, while another YouTuber could choose the ability uh, Flash Fire, which makes no sense for a Bug Water type. But it was my job to take all these random attributes and make them work into a new Pokemon that I created. Did I manage to pull it off? you decide. That's why in this video you'll see the various traits that each YouTuber picked and then the genuine reaction to the Pokemon I made using their attributes. Twice. Because I decided to do the challenge twice. The title is a lie. If you're new here, I make tons of videos where I create my own Fakemon, a lot of times with fun challenges and twists, like turning memes or video game characters into Pokemon. But what's cool is that both of the Pokemon that we'll be creating today will be part of the Fakemon region I am currently developing. So make sure to subscribe to check that out. Now let's begin with the first Fakemon we made. Now in order to understand how we made this fake mon, you'll need to know all the attributes that I asked my friends to provide. They are the environment, stats, personality, height, type, body shape, color scheme, a unique power, and ability. This is basically the order in which all the Poketubers responded to me. After I told each Poketuber the attribute that they were in charge of, Birdkeeper Toby responded first. So the attribute I've chosen for the first Pokemon is the environment, and for that I've chosen Gemstone Mines. Just because Pokemon that live in Gemstone Mines tend to be typically quite cool, like Carbink and Sableye, and I just wanted to choose something that was a little bit more out there. So with one attribute given, the gears were already turning. In my mind, I was thinking of a Carbuncle Pokemon with uh, crystals on top, but the next few attributes could completely change the concept. Next was Callum. I was tasked to provide all the base stats for this Pokemon, and the only way I knew to sort of insert myself into this a little bit was to choose my favorite number, which is seven, and I made all of the base stats multiplications of the number seven, and this was inspired by the Ultra Beasts. All of their base stats are, are, are prime numbers, and I just think uh, it's really fascinating how into like the, the nitty gritty that Pokemon can get like even down to the base stats have some sort of theme to them. And I just think that's really cool. Okay, I did not expect the reasoning for the stats to be that deep, but so far these high defenses work for a crystalline Pokemon. Then Vinny, who I asked to give this Pokemon a personality responded. So I thought it would be awesome to design a Pokemon that was happy but easily angered. And I thought this would be really cool because just imagining a Pokemon that's just having the best day of his life and then something happens and at the snap of a finger, he's pissed off, his day is ruined. That hot and cold personality, I think, could lead to a really cool design. Again, that works. It'll be a cute, happy crystal Pokemon that can be feisty at times. But this all hinges on the height of the Pokemon. I gave the first Pokemon a height of 5'10". Uh, so it can't be cute. A bigger rock monster that walks around caves, I guess, but this will all hinge on the type combination that Alex will give me. Okay, so the attribute I picked was uh, the typing of Fire Steel, and I picked that mainly because it's probably one of my favorite type combinations. Ah, okay, this isn't a bad decision, it just derails everything, but I can make it work, especially since steel types live in caves and we have the perfect stats for a steel type, actually. What if it was this steel monster that walks on all fours and eats precious metals and gems? Kinda like Leron, but I don't want to jump the gun with Lumio's trainer Zack next in line. The attribute I chose for the first Pokemon is its body shape, and that being one that's bipedal that also has a tail. I don't know why, but when Ron asked me to come up with a body shape, for some reason I thought Tyranitar, so let's see what Ron comes up with. Well, it's not going to be on all fours then. What's funny is that the body shape Zack gave me is the most common type of Pokemon, so he actually was being kind to me. It just went against everything I knew about this Pokemon. I guess it would be more like an Agron instead of a Leron, but with Asteroid videos next, here's hoping Frank gives me orange and grays. I I'm going to be honest with you guys, I literally just went on like a color swap website and I just kind of clicked a bunch of times until it gave me a color palette that I really liked. Uh, and I settled on this like green, black, light blue sort of color scheme. And I think it works really well. In my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, maybe he's like a grass water type. And I wanted to make sure the colors felt right. Uh, and they actually meshed well together, which is why I had a website pick it for me. <laughs> this is so fun. Originally, I was thinking that this turned the entire design upside down, but in fact, it pulled everything together. I can make this Pokemon have green plates of metal, because that's what rusted uh, bronze or copper looks like. And then what's better than just normal orange fire? Blue fire. It all comes together. It's simply Glitch X City's job to not derail it. What power did you give this Pokemon, Glitch? Okay, so for the first attribute, I decided to go with water purification. Now, the reason why I decided to go with that is because when I was thinking about different attributions and stuff, uh, I was drinking water. I'm like, hmm, you know what would be cool? 
clean water all the time because nobody likes dirty water, right? What? Okay. I thought it was over after this, but <laughs> this Pokemon could simply boil water using its fire, sanitizing it in the process. So that leaves one final attribute, the ability. And guess which ability Game Boy Luke picked? So the ability I chose was Mirror Armor, uh, and I mainly chose it because I know very, very little Pokemon get it. If I remember correctly, I think it's just the Corviknight line that gets it. Uh, I thought it was a really unique ability, and I wanted to give a uh, unique ability to a uh, unique Pokemon. What are the odds that my dude picked an ability that works perfectly for a Steel type? I don't have to worry about that at all, I guess. So with all the attributes finalized, how in the world do I make them work? The answer was the Crucible. A crucible is that metal container or bowl that you put metals inside in order to melt them under high temperatures. What if I made this bulky monster that lives in mines and gathers materials to melt inside a giant crucible on its back? You don't know how happy I was when this concept popped into my head. Let's design it. While it's not a pseudo legendary, I'm basically giving it the proportions of a final pseudo legendary, but with a bowl on the back. I gave it a pickaxe like horn on the back of its head and made sure it was happy looking. It uses the fire on its shoulders to heat up the crucible, but it was time to decide how the the metal plates looked. Originally the armor was more rigid, but then I decided to make it round and free-flowing like lava, as if the heat from its body actually melted its armor into different shapes over its lifespan. Once I added Frank's color scheme, I had to determine the configuration. I even flipped the greens last minute. But before I reveal the final design to the Poketubers who helped make the fake mon, I actually showed them all the attributes that each YouTuber came up with to see their reaction to the same dilemma that I had, which was making them all work together. So, for the environment, Birdkeeper Toby wants to put this Pokemon in the gemstone mines. Ooh, I like that vibe right there. That is an awesome environment. Callum gave him, like, starter stats, okay? HP 70, attack 84, defense 133. Hold on now. Dang! It's gonna be pretty beefy. Stats? I know nothing about stats. Wait, Vinny's on this one? He said, super happy and outgoing, but could very easily lose his temper of the most minor inconvenience. <laughs> Is he describing himself? <laughs> That's a good energy for a Pokemon to have, actually. I like that a lot. Man, that, that, listen, that, he sound like me. I'm gonna be honest with you. He sound like, hey. That's all of us. <laughs> That's all of us. <laughs> and uh, Sacred, my boy Sacred said, the Pokemon is 5'10". It's almost as tall as me. Okay, that gives me sort of like Charizard vibes in terms of height. Aura Guardian wants us to be a fire and steel type. The typing is fire and Yes, we got we got mirror armor on a steel type, which at least makes a little bit of sense. I like that a lot. I can see it. This is gonna be a crazy combination. Trainer Zach wants the Pokemon to be bipedal and have a tail. Couldn't agree with him more. Love Pokemon that stand on two feet. Love Pokemon that have tails. Yo, Frank chose the best colors. Yo, oh my god. Its color scheme is not traditionally what you'd expect from a fire type. But I actually like it when Pokemon do that more. A greenish color for a fire steel type? <laughs> is that going to clash with like Aura Guardian's fire steel? Wow, I'm very interested to see how this is going to come out. So the blue is going to be like a blue flame, like a super hot. That sound kind of cold. Like, hold on, like... This Pokemon is insane! Glitch X City. Love your music, by the way, Glitch. You're excellent. But then it has the power of water purification? Crazy power for a fire type. Like, it boils out all of the gross stuff, I guess. It's great for the environment. 10 out of 10. And this ability is mirror armor, which is actually hilarious. It actually works well with it being a steel type. I don't even know what that does. <laughs> now, Luke, I totally know what that does. I'm not going to Google that real quick. Let's see. Uh... Bounces back only the stat lowering effects that the Pokemon receives. Huh. I could not tell you what this is going to look like. Despite all of these attributes being thrown into a pot, I can genuinely see something really cool being made from this. I picture like a tall green. I, I, I'm thinking about a creeper. It's a creeper. I, I'm, I'm going to be shocked if this looks tangible. You know what I mean? But how is a fire going to work out? Well, I'm, I'm really interested to see how Ron pulls this off. Maybe the blue could also be blue fire instead of being just a regular red fire. I'm actually really excited to look at this. So I'm just going to. And now here is our first Pokemon, Crucibulk, the smelting Pokemon. These friendly yet fickle Pokemon have lived in deep gemstone caves for centuries, using their horn to mine for precious metals, which they smelt inside the crucible on their back. They eagerly eat the purified metals. Ancient civilizations would use Crucibulk's concave backs to boil water, sanitizing it in the process. Crucibulk were worshipped as gods. Alright, the moment of truth, here we go. Ooh! Oh, no! Yeah, the blue flame! The blue flame! I knew it! You had to! Like, there's... You just had to... That's the wave. 100% the wave. Oh, he's so sick! Oh, it was blue fire! Oh, he's like a little dino! 
And then the shiny like has the regular red fire and like the ah oh, yo. Crucible. Oh my god. Okay, fire steel type. This looks like the type of Pokemon I would use. This looks very Calum Core. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's that's kind of cold. Hey, that's kind of cold. Hold on. That is kind of cold. Wait. That is Crucible. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I got it right with the blue the blue flames. Yo! Oh my god, dude, he's beautiful. I can't even lie. My eye immediately went to the shiny. The the shiny coloring is just insane. But Frank, the regular sh coloring is fantastic as well. This is so cool. Whoa! Okay. That actually looks really cool. What the heck? Oh, I like this. Oh, he did the shiny version as well. Hell yeah. This is very cool, Ron. Whoa! Hey, yo! Crucible. Okay, all right. I see it now. I see it. I see it. I'm five foot six. This Pokemon is five foot ten. I see it. You know, I see the bulkiness. I'm biased, but I think this stat distribution actually works really well for it. I was kind of nervous. The fire steel and the colors I gave, I was a little concerned. I love the colors so much. I'm not gonna hold you. Maybe I like the shiny more because it reminds me of like a teenage Tyranitar. Props to Ron. I'm, I'm surprised he made the fire and steel work out. That looks really cool. I love how he's smiling too. This must be when he's still in a good mood. But if something happens, if someone comes into his environment and maybe even just takes a step in there or the wind blows a certain way, he's going to be pissed off very quickly. And I would imagine the flames are going to get higher. I, I love that it's showing his back too. We don't have enough official art of Pokemon like this. Honestly, I, like with the water purification power, I was kind of like, oh God, how is that going to work? But I think it actually works. This Pokemon's kind of lit. Pun intended. This is 100% a fire type I would have on my team. They eagerly eat the purified metals. Dude, this is a metal eating Pokemon. I think Ron was throwing some really hard um, things to mix in together here. But this is like, yeah, this is well executed. I like this. And I could see this being maybe not like a legendary Pokemon. Okay, so it's kind of like a dinosaur version of... Gigalith. Okay, that's probably a bad comparison, but... And look at the body shape. I like the body shape, yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Very dinosaur, dragon, monster-like. It fits well. And that pose is sick, too. It's like in that Zoroaki Lucario place. I could see something like that for this. Hey, this low-key looks like a godly Pokemon. Like I said, it, it kind of looks like a pseudo-legendary of sorts, so it makes sense. Yeah, this Pokemon is for sure a god. I want him on my next Pokemon team. A 5'10 Pokemon as a guy. Hey, listen. Shout out my short kings. You know what I'm saying? We in this. Let's let's go. Wow. I I I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry for being a pessimist. This this works really well. That it turned out really well. You took all the attributes and you like delivered exactly what was needed. Can I have can I have this Pokemon? <laughs> Man, I wish it were real. Oh, what? A plus for me. I'm a big fan. I love it. So for fake mod number two, I asked these Poketubers to come up with completely different attributes. I also shuffled the attributes that each person would have to pick. So this time, Sacred Almighty was in charge of the typing. For the second Pokemon, I chose the type combination Dragon Fairy. Dragon Fairy is very good because it's, it's, it'll be relatively flexible. A fairy and dragon type can look like vague creatures without having to adhere to a specific animal, which we probably won't have in this challenge. I'm thinking something mystical, uh, but Toby is next. The attribute for the second Pokemon I've chosen is actually the height, and I have just gone for a flat four meters tall. Why? Because I'm about two meters. Let's go with double person height, roughly. Okay, that works for dragon. Thank God it's not a bug type. It basically translates to 13 feet, which is pretty gnarly. So for this second Pokemon, I was in charge of the stats, and immediately my brain went to Glass Cannon. Really, really good offensive stats, but lacking severely in the defense. But he is very fast, so we can get those hits off. But if you tickle this Pokemon, he would probably perish. So this Pokemon, if it hits you, it's gonna do some damage, but if he gets hit, huh, it's good night, Irene. Who's Irene? These stats are good, almost the inverse of the previous Pokemon. Thank God we didn't get a Steel type again, but can Callum continue this lucky streak? So for the second Pokemon, I was tasked with providing the environment and I landed on Cemetery, uh, mainly because I live relatively close to one, uh, but also because I think it's quite a polarizing area and I think only like a specific type of Pokemon could maybe be seen living in a cemetery. And I wanted to see if Ron is able to make it look like it would live in a cemetery, but also make it make sense with all the other attributes. Thank God fairy type is already associated with spirituality, so we'll just make a fairy dragon that hangs out near the dead. 
The attribute I chose for the second Pokemon is a mischievous personality. I don't know, something sneaky, something that likes to cause trouble for people. I feel like that's something that's really cool and memorable. That 100% works for a fairy type in a cemetery. Dude can be pulling pranks on anybody entering the cemetery at night. Frank's job was to give us a power. Hopefully, it'll aid this Pokemon in scaring teens uh, who wander into the cemetery. I suggested the power to create smoke screens. I was kind of just trying to think of something that was out there, something that could really fit into any design. My initial thought was like he'd be like kind of like a ninja doing sneaky things. You wouldn't want to see him in an alley. Or it might be something like Torkoal. Wow, it's, it's kind of crazy how this works perfectly with the previous two attributes. Almost like a creepy, foggy night. And perhaps its body is partially made up of the smoke, uh, which is why it doesn't have the best defenses. But even more so, I'm thinking that it releases incense from its body that calms restless souls. Hopefully, uh, Glitch's body type is something uh, graceful. I decided to go with a B-shaped type because when you think about it, we technically don't have a lot of B-shaped Pokemon. The reason why I chose Bagpipe because I love Bagpipes. Bagpipes are amazing. So she picked the least graceful instrument with the opposite of this serpentine body I was imagining. But again, sometimes the most out there attributes helps give us a direction. And in this case, it did. I mean, wings on a dragon makes sense. I mean, it also makes sense for the fairies, right? But also bagpipes kind of have the, the shape of a Pokemon. I'm thinking of giving this Pokemon horns that look like the tubes on a bagpipe that release smoke instead of sounds. Makes sense. What ability did Alex give us? So I gave the ability uh, Marvel scale now I'm just gonna double check what Marvel Scale does. I believe it's what um, Dragonite, no, it's what Milotic has. Okay, ups defensive, it has a status condition. Okay, I think I was supposed to give it multi scale, but Marvel Scale works either way. What are the odds that the Aura Guardian gave us the ability for a Pokemon that was definitely gonna have scales? All we gotta do is let Game Boy Luke cook and pick the colors. The colors I chose are like, I'm, I'm just selfish, okay? It's just a collection of my absolute favorite colors. That's literally it. <laughs> What's crazy is that this color scheme would have been handy for the fire steel type Pokemon that we, you know, previously did. But the pink and blue makes sense for a dragon fairy and the black and orange could become bee stripes. So let's make a bee-like mischievous dragon that releases incense that it uses to run away and also stay elusive. It has a long plump body with relatively tiny wings, which helps give it contrast and make it look both awe-inspiring and goofy. The horns will be hollow, its head and tail will be masked in smoke, and it'll have the most mischievous expression. I gave it a streak of smoke that uh, separates the top and bottom halves of its body. I then included these scaly stripes that'll help it look like the combination of a dragon and bee. Keep in mind that after I added the colors, the final version of this Pokemon doesn't actually look like this. I removed its neck and changed its proportions completely. But before revealing the final design to you guys and the YouTubers, let me show them the attributes that everybody chose. All right, Fakemon's number two's attributes. I'm really curious about its type. Dragon Fairy. Okay, I think th I think that could work. That's a bold, bold, bold typing. I like that. Birdkeeper Toby made this Pokemon 13 feet tall. 13-1 to be exact. Is that what four meters is? Hang on, conversion. Four meter. Huh? Why is, there, why is he so tall? Is he going to the NBA? He's freaking huge. That's a tall bee. Oh my God. Is it like a bee serpent or something? So not only is this tall, but it's also really good at attack. Wow, he's, he's a beast. And it's actually got the base stats to back up that sort of height and type, I would say. Goodness gracious, he's better than Crucible. He's a monster. Those stats are broken. <laughs> Those stats, this is this is possibly an Uber Pokemon. 125 in both attack stats and 130 speed. That's insane. Uh, he lives in a cemetery. Ooh. He is a spooky boy that do be hanging out by tombstones. I was thinking of doing a cemetery. That was a good, good thing. And it's mischievous. So far, I'm liking all of these. And he's mischievous. Okay. Yeah. No, this is just, this is, this is looking like just a hyper offensive Zoroark. I love it. So I don't know if I want to keep this Pokemon with me vibes. You know, I'm not sure about that. You, you never know what he's going to do. He's kind of like Loki from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, he might just, he might stab you in the back or he might do a good thing. It's got the power of smoke screens. Oh, this is all working well. Okay, hold up. I guess that is like the whole, there are some fairy moves like aromatic mist and stuff like that could, that could be worked into that. But, oh no, here we go, glitch ruining it. It's a bagpipe that has a bee-like shaped body. A bagpipe? Bagpipe bee-like. Like a bagpipe? 
What the hell is this thing gonna look like? <laughs> okay, dude, immediately I'm just thinking of like a giant bee. We might be making like a, a, a ghost type like Kingdra. That's weird, that's weird, but I kind of like it. Uh, his ability is Marvel scale with the colors I chose. Yo, okay, listen, Aura Guardian smashed that. that with the colors I chose. Love that, I don't have to Google that one. I know what that does. How did we make these work so well? Marvel scale works for dragon. And the colors, oh, Luke. Oh my God, that is one hell of a color scheme. But I'm interested to see how the bee-like body is gonna come into play, so. Hmm, okay. I'm super curious what you did here on. Let's take a look. And here is the second Pokemon that we made, Illusense. The smoke Pokemon. Illusense tend to appear at cemeteries one night out of the month. Half of their body is made up of aromatic smoke, which wafts as they fly. The incense that this Pokemon releases from their hollow horns calms restless souls. When spotted, it will release a smoke screen and vanish. It loves to scare groups of children who enter cemeteries as a test of courage. Oh, that is so sick. That is so, <laughs> that's so sick. No, that's cool. That's cool. I take it back. The bagpipe be like the be wait. Oh yeah, it's bagpipe like. Oh, okay. Okay. That I mean that worked. I mean it's it looks spooky. Huh? What? Okay. <laughs> so I was right. It does kind of coil up a little bit. Oh bro, he's got like a halo. He's got like a smoke screen halo. Look at his face! Dude, his face. Whoa! I feel like depending on how you look at his face, you can see different faces. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's cool. Oh, this is cute. This is really cool. Ooh. Okay. No, that works. I love this Pokemon. Yo, I love it. I'm not. <laughs> I, I love it. I love this. I am a massive fan of this. This is really cool. And it's just got all the colors that I really, really enjoy. So that's. That is so sick. This looks straight up looks like a mythical. It straight up looks like a some sort of legendary. It's a lot less edgelord than I had imagined. But this is like, I would buy a plushie of these. I think everyone would want one of these. Wow, I'm like, I'm shocked. I'm actually blown away by this. This is so cool. It even has like little bug-like attributes as well. I guess that comes from the body shape that it has. Love his little stubby arms and legs. He's definitely not walking on those. He's probably primarily flying. His design, he feels like he would be smaller, but I kind of I kind of vibe with him being bigger. I don't know. He's a big boy. Like, if I saw this, I would my first thought would be like, what's a ghost type? But it's Dragon Fairy. I love Pokemon like that. I could see this Pokemon evolving a couple times. Although, no, because it's huge, because I made it huge. <laughs> <laughs> He's really huge. That's the funny part. But you can tell because it's Pokemon, it's 13 foot going from the head to the tail. He's absolutely gigantic. His shiny is beautiful. Dude, his shiny is beautiful. I love his shiny. It looks like something that looks kind of friendly, but would really try to scare you, especially since they live in cemeteries. I love that. I feel like that environment fit perfectly with the personality that I chose for this uh, this Fakemon. So yeah. And he's a monster. He's fast. He hits like a truck. He can be a mixed attacker if you want him to. I love this. <laughs> I love this. The instance that this Pokemon releases from their hollow horns calms restless souls. Aww. Oh, incense. Wow, that took me so long to get. <laughs> How very creative. I don't even know which one I like the best. They're both good. They're both good. Good job, everybody else who contributed as well. I really like how like all of the attributes really came together for this one. I love that. I'm really impressed by how everything got melded together with these two. It somehow beautifully came together. You know what I mean? It's sick. It's really cool. You know what? We came together and we designed the perfect Pokemon. And I believe Lucense is that perfect Pokemon. Round of applause for everybody. True Green 7, thank you for putting this together. And I love how this Pokemon is a mixture of traits I would never put together unless I had a bunch of other minds helping me. That's why I love this challenge. I could never make these exact designs without my friends. So thank you to all the Poketubers who helped me make these fake mon. And I hope you guys enjoyed this enough to maybe want a part two. Leave a like and subscribe if you do, and maybe even let me know which Poketubers you'd like on this potential series. Check out my other Fake Monk creation videos, and check the description for the links to these lovely YouTubers, and consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter where I post sneak peeks and final art of these Pokemon too. Bye!